Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back. This is Ramadan TV. My guest is Dr. Shaida Umar. We're talking GBV and we're now going to be touching on the issue around stress and anxiety. All of these issues obviously just uh, makes your stress and anxiety levels go through the roof. What exactly is stress and anxiety? And when you are overcome with those emotions, how do you react or how do you kind of, uh, you know, not react or interact with the people around you? So if we look at stress and anxiety, I think it's very important to understand what, how does it actually leave one feeling? The, the kind of feelings that are experienced by per people in that situation, they feel helpless, hopeless, out of control, um, and, and not knowing what to do with themselves. And I think that is of grave concern that a person should be in that state of emotion because things, you know, go out of control and they find themselves acting impulsively or acting in inappropriate or unacceptable ways. So just looking up to the whole build-up of Ramadan and if you're looking specifically at the wife, the mother, the female head, uh, head in the household that is expected to fulfill certain responsibilities, uh, preparing for Ramadan, preparing all the foods, the whole anticipation and an unrealistic expectation that that person is putting on herself, uh, measuring herself with hearing what other people are saying, oh, I'm making this, I'm preparing this, my husband, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my children, and you start thinking this, but I'm not doing all of that. And uh, immediately a sense of, inadequacy that I need to in order to measure up to be this perfect role mo model of a mother of a daughter-in-law of a wife I need to do these things and I think that is something one needs to ask yes it's great to do everything for everybody but it comes at a price and and what is the purpose what are you actually achieving at the end of it so people are going to eat um, maybe relish it for 30 seconds and forget about it. And what happens to the person that has put in so much effort, that has put in uh, all her energy, her whole soul to fulfill the needs of the family. But at the end of the day, it comes at a price, whether it's physically, emotionally eroding her well-being, her sense of strength. And then inside, deeper inside, you start finding there's resentment building up because sometimes family members, we're all normal and we're all human. We are to acknowledge, validate, and you're actually waiting for that validation. It doesn't come sometimes. It's not forthcoming. And then there's resentment, there's anger, and that could have a ripple effect because then something that is said may not come out the way it has been intended to, and it could result in acrimony, altercations, and I think this is something that we need to be realistic. Uh, so what if you cannot make 20 savouries? <laughs> what, what are you actually achieving Gosh. and what have you lost? We need Absolutely. to look at the uh, gains and the losses. What are the losses? So people won't eat 20 different savouries. Are they going to lose anything by that? Hopefully they lose some weight and that wouldn't be a bad thing. But generally, I think at the end of the day, it's about self-preservation by preserving oneself. You are also not, so we always say, who's containing the container? And it's important if the container is contained, the whole family is going to be Absolutely. contained. You nurture the, the mother, the wife, and you're actually nurturing a whole family. So you, you've, you've really said a lot about what I can identify with as well. I was feeling very pressurized when I heard and saw on social media, you know, what all the women are getting up to. And I thought to myself, that's absolutely crazy. I put my foot down and only did as much as I was able to. And I'm feeling fine about that. Uh, but the point is, um, lots of our younger girls are now trying to keep up with the Joneses and putting tremendous pressure on themselves. And you ask the question, why? Uh, that's the one issue. And then you do too much and then you don't feel validated and then you don't feel good about yourself. Having said all of that and talking about stress and pressure, um, where does that leave you? How do you, you know, how do you just get out of this rat race of everything? 
I think also social media is one of the big culprits, is it not? And all of these people that want a gazillion followers and everyone wanting to be better, more popular, um, you know, and more in demand and have that many likes and that many, uh, and uh, one of your tweets or one of your posts go viral, makes you feel good about yourself. But post that event, what do you have to show for it? So, Julie, you've actually touched on a very, very core issue. And I think we need to look at everybody that's so caught up and trapped in this whole social media, uh, cyber world. I think it's actually, uh, it's addictive. Firstly, we know that it's addictive, but it can be very toxic as well. Uh, if people are n do not have the insight and the deep understanding of its impact on their self. Uh, w often we find this, this kind of behavior where people want to be recognized. There's usually underlying unmet emotional needs. You want to have so many followers. So today you've got that, tomorrow you're striving for. I've, I've worked with a lot of young people and recently worked with a young girl who's got 60,000 followers. And then I said to her, so how does that leave you feeling? Now she wants to have more followers. And I said, so what are you achieving by that? She couldn't give me an answer. So I think the important thing is not, a, you know, we need to realize that you don't need other people's approval, affection, the likes that you get and the retweets like you speak to tweeting and retweeting. Actually, you need to find that inner space, that safe space that I am because we are. And, and you don't need other people to make you feel good about yourself. You need to start believing in yourself. Uh, and I think that's key for any person, whether you're a male or a female, you don't actually need to prove to other people to be recognized. If you start accepting and if you start showing you know, gratitude for everything around you, a grateful person is going to be a happy person. Absolutely. And that happy person will always be grateful. Just to go back to one of the comments you made about the 20 dozen of savories or whatever in this competition that goes on that, uh, you know, you've made X amount for your family and you're going to be having a great Ramadan. The focus and the emphasis should be on preparing for your spirituality, doing everything possible to get your spirituality levels up. Um, but then we get the older um, grannies telling us or possibly even religious people telling us that, but that's part of your spirituality. That is an ibadah in itself, because if you prepare wholesome and good meals for your family, you're going to be blessed. So you kind of sit almost in this conundrum, you know, you're yeah. not quite sure how to balance it. But I think for me, Julie, that's a no brainer because um, the intention is, you know, you, you want to share love. And, and the whole intention of Ramadan, what is it? It's about coming together. So that in itself is spiritual. And, and families working together, whether the children are laying the table, clearing the table, the husband's bringing stuff or doing shopping or errands for the wife, it's all about that coming together, working together, praying together, oh, absolutely. playing together. Mm -hmm. Ramadan doesn't mean that you're not allowed to cheer each other up and I think that's when we talk about spirituality that's the spirit in which Ramadan needs to be executed the coming togetherness of family in sharing everything it's not burdening a single person so it is an ibadah to do but it's an ibadah for all of us to do together so I'm not knocking those very industrious ladies that go out and do their utmost best to you know prepare as much as they can pre Ramadan because I also understand the reason they do that is that they free themselves up in the mm -hmm. month of Ramadan mm -hmm. to engage in as much ibadah as they possibly can uh, but at the same time, uh, it, it does come at a price, does it not? Indeed, and I think that's what I keep on saying, that, you know, one needs to take care of yourself. If you take care of yourself, you're going to feel good about yourself. And you, when you feel so good, you will only exude positive energy, and that's what you want to do. You want to spread the positive energy, so what you give out is going to come back to you. And that's where we leave it. <laughs> On a very positive note by Dr. Shaida Umar, it's about positivity. It's just emanating that goodness, 
kindness, respect, all of those good things, which is part of your spirit, spirituality, it's part of your ibadah. Spread the love, spread the respect, and alhamdulillah, you'll have the most amazing Ramadan. And for those of you who have filled up your freezers, alhamdulillah to you, I think you're a superwoman. And uh, inshallah, that has also freed you up for the month of Ramadan to, in, to, to engage in ma as much ibadah as you possibly can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our efforts but that's just part of the conversation obviously till the next time as always thank you for your company and it is assalamu alaikum and khudafiz from the entire ramadan tv team